Hello and welcome to my advanced Maxwell guide. In this video we're going to be going over all of the actual ways to use Maxwell as a unit as well as some interesting things that are good to know on Maxwell when you're running him. So we're just running uh, like seven units on like a 10 or 12 unit map, however many units this one takes, just to, actually we're running eight, just to kind of show what the, what the unit can do, who he combos well with. So to begin, let's go over the items that he's good with. Uh, you can't go wrong with strength items or the endurance earring or res earring. Uh, if you put res earring on Maxwell, it essentially gives him th three lives. Uh, because he dies once, gets resed, dies a second time, gets res. So he gets two reses, or in other words, three lives. And if you also put Gila res on him, he gets four lives, which is ridiculous. And then if you put endurance earring res earring and gila res on him he has four lives and every time he gets at 50 percent health or lower he has half damage so he becomes so durable you can make ridiculously bad positional mistakes with him he can have like a like i don't know 10 enemies around him and probably survive like two to three turns of everything hitting him potentially with with those combos so he can make ridiculous positional mistakes with endurance earring and, and res spam so that's one big upside to running Maxwell. Uh, you can run speed items on him. He has a high speed. He doesn't need accuracy items, so you can skip those. Defensive items I would skip because his defenses are fine. Uh, strength items are good. Speed items are good. Evasion items I wouldn't say are worth it. I would say like endurance earring, res earring, stuff like this. He kind of is like a damage tank. So he can tank while dealing damage, which is really useful. Uh, you can throw Bangle Vitality on him if you want. That's like another item that's okay on him. I would say he has two basic builds. He has he has a, a passive where you either get triple thrust TP minus one or you exploit enemy weaknesses for more damage. So if there are a bunch of enemies with weaknesses, he can throw elemental stones to trigger two birds, one stone, and then also deal increased damage on top of their weakness. So you can see here there's only like a handful of enemies with weaknesses, so this would be a bad map to run that build. But on a map where enemies have a lot of resistances and weaknesses, he can selectively target their weakness with elemental stones. Uh, so he can AoE heal with uh, pellets to trigger two birds, one stone. If it heals, it, actually, it has to actually restore health on multiple targets. If you just use it on multiple targets that are at full health, it won't do anything. So that's something to consider. Uh, he's really good with Medina and Julio both of which can battery him so he can spam high jump that's his best ability in my opinion uh, alternatively if you don't want a high jump spam you can always use a run through build where you line enemies up have him get behind enemies and run through them for back crits that also can be good uh, triple thrust can be useful to use for like just hitting an enemy once in the back for pretty good damage so what we're gonna do here let's actually give him a damage boost with a benedict i want to see how high we can get his damage we're going to be using high jump. So he passively attacks two enemies with his spear, which can also trigger two birds, one stone, assuming it hits both of them. This is really useful to do for just building up TP on dead turns if you don't want to spam elemental stones, as they can be quite expensive. Uh, but aside from that, that's really all there is for triggering two birds, one stone. You have the elemental stones. You have the... I'm actually curious. It's 63 strength now. Or it says, like, what, plus six? Or no, it's plus five. Wow, Raging Beast is not as good. That's upgraded Raging Beast, too. It only gives him plus five. All right. Anyways, he has three ways to trigger two birds, one stone. You hit enemies with spear attacks that hit multiple things. You know, run through, uh, high jump, uh, his basic attack. You have the elemental stones. If they hit multiple things, that will trigger it. And then you have healing AoE if the healing items hit multiple allies and heal multiple allies specifically it can't it can't be used on a full health ally if it if it's on, if it's used on, if it heals one and then doesn't heal the other for actual lost health it won't work so something to consider so he can essentially be like a healer for a turn and it's actually fine so he has like flexibility he can attack with physical with elemental or heal to get battery which is actually pretty good and pretty flexible and on the top of the fact that he's tanky He's a really good bruiser, but he also has enough damage to be considered a damage carry on New Game Plus. On a fresh save, however, his damage is quite poor. He actually will deal less damage than Roland consistently on New Game Plus. 
because he just is missing a lot and he needs upgrades. So by the time you get him, it's usually towards the end of the game anyways. He doesn't have revive until level 33, which is, you know, it's fine for New Game Plus because you're going to be level 33 in New Game Plus, but until you're there, it's not the case. All right, so here are the options we have here. What we can do is we can throw a stone. So you can see here, throw a stone. You see that guy's resistant, so we can target his weakness. We aren't running the weakness increase, but you can see this is decent damage. Uh, we can high jump. We could run through. So their backs are facing, like, actually where Eridor is, is where I'd want to run through. I still can run through, however, though. Uh, I can show that. I'll, sh I'll show that now. So, so one of the things I wanted to show was using Traverse to set up run-throughs, because this can be a little bit cheaper. It basically just costs you 3 TP as long as you only hit, or as long as you hit at least two things. So you can see here we're going to get some back crits. Unfortunately, there's too much height elevation change. If Eridor wasn't in this position and I was here, that would be a little bit better. Um, I can't Quietus now at this point, though. So I'll just show triple stab. So triple or triple thrust. Triple thrust is good for just single target damage, just to like put some damage on something. It's also really good on mages. It usually does like 50 to 80% of their health on a back crit. So you can triple thrust for like single target. And then I'll have Medina fast acting him just to like show some other stuff. Alright, so now we'll show just like using a stone to get AoE. Or to get like two birds, one stone. Now he'd regen this anyways, so you could you could triple thrust here to try to get this lower. For example, he would have regen that one TP on his turn start to high jump. Uh, so we'll have Julio just kind of chill out for a turn, and then I'll have Benedict now him because this is a video about Maxwell. All right, now we're gonna show high jump. So one thing to note about high jump. It does deal increased damage if you jump down because you'll, it'll be considered an attack from height advantage. It can backstab, uh, so you can see here it is going to hit these enemies in the back. But also note that you can't high jump from your from the same position. Like you can't high jump at where you're at. You have to high jump to a new square. So if you are in this position where you want to high jump multiple things, you can just move over and then high jump here and get like the back crits. So let's do that. So you can see there I got. I got a random crit and then I got two back crits. Every enemy in front of you whose back is facing you will get back crit. This is extremely useful because in most situations, especially if you get like enemies furied by like Eridor or something, they're, they'll usually be facing your team. So he can actually set up back crits extremely effectively. And also note after you high jump, even though it costs 5 TP, as long as you hit more than one thing, which you should be, you'll get one, one TP back. So it virtually costs 4 TP, but you need 5 to activate it. Because you wouldn't high jump a single target, it does less damage than triple thrust. Uh, okay, so let's just uh, kill this guy arbitrarily. Okay, so I'm just looking at my notes here. I've, I've covered actually a lot of it. Alright, so we have basic builds, we have the passive, the attacks to enemies. Okay, this is a good point. Alright, so Maxwell is not a tank, like not officially, but he is extremely tanky. And with the the res spam, so right now he has res, or he, does, he doesn't have res earring. He just has endurance earring. Uh, what, what you want to do with endurance earring is just keep healing him. And just try not to get reses to trigger. And if the res triggers, fine, but you want to you wanna prevent it from triggering. Uh, but if you res spam him with like Gila res and res earring... He becomes so tanky, it's absurd. I did mention this earlier, uh, but here's it. All right, so she doesn't have res yet. I could battle cry her, just to put, put a res on him. So the way reses work is, I'm pretty sure Gila's res is always first, over, over a res earring, and then it goes res earring, and then it goes his res. Um, her res being first matters because it protects his passive res. Because you can always re-up a Gila res. You can't re-up his passive. Once it's gone, it's gone. So it's actually useful that that's the case. And it's also it's also useful that her res uh, hits... It uh, covers up res earring. Because like sim similar to the passive, it can't be uh, regained once it's consumed. 
Right. So the, the the order res like interacts is actually pretty pretty stupid. Honestly, they should make his revive trigger first because it's like way too powerful that he can just sit on three revives. He'll never die. Like you could you could have him next to like five to six enemies all attacking him, and he should be able to survive it for like two or three turns or more. So that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, so if he has dead turns and he's low on TP, uh, you can always throw elemental stones, uh, stab two enemies, uh, throw a you know AOE healing to actually heal dudes, stuff like this. Uh, one big two units he's great with are Medina and Julio. The reason for this is they can constantly give him TP so he can spam high jump. Uh, if you run if you run Corintin with Maxwell, it's one of the most absurd combos in the game. Because you have Crinton spamming Glacial Moon, and then you have Maxwell spamming High Jump, and between the two of them, it's absurd area damage that just nukes enemies down really fast. And if you also have, like, Medina throw, like, fast-acting medication on Corintin to get extra damage off with his abilities, it just gets really absurd. So, it gets it gets quite bad. <laughs> it's, it's almost... It's definitely broken. So there's no way of... Yeah, you can see these enemies are balling up. Like, this... All of these, like... Six enemies can get high jumped right now, I believe. Maybe this one can't get hit. Let's see. He actually might be able to. He actually might be able to get high jumped from here, which is crazy. Uh, we're going to keep Eridor alive, though, so we'll heal him. Sarah Noah's good. He's forced on mo most maps, but under Conviction's banner helps uh, Maxwell get more high jumps off as well. So between all three of the batteries... Wait, did that mage whose fury just retreat? Oh, he can't get to him. Ah, oh, that's so weird. I'm not used to this dumb math. Because, you know, most of the t in most cases, there isn't a stupid thing enemies can glide on. Uh, but, you get the idea. Okay, so he also passively has a high chance to counterattack with counter stance, making him basically like Eridor in this way, because Eridor counterattacks. Uh, so you can see here... It, 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 so it'll try to like position it so you hit multiple things. Uh, but you can't high jump on someone. That, like I obstruct it. What I could do is I could go here. And high jump here. Or no, I can still here. Okay, I guess I have to like do this. Do it this way. I don't think high jump can miss. Yeah, I don't think it can miss either. I haven't seen it miss before. So you can see here we can just reposition and just set up a high jump. And the... In the Plus or minus height is quite flexible, so he's able to get off high jumps from weird angles, and like it still does damage. <laughs> These dudes are like climbing the thing to reroute to Eridor because they can't get to him. That's so we that's so weird. Okay, so I did go over his baseline accuracy and speed. Uh, you could run speed items on him. So if you here's here's one way to run Maxwell that I think is optimal. Having him just sit in the middle of enemies is stupid because you should. Like on every map, like every on every map you can have good positioning, right? So having a res by default and also a Gila res is more than enough for him to be tanky, even if he's not running endurance earring. If you throw two speed items, like a speed amulet and a speed bracelet, or two speed bracelets on him, he'll have really ridiculous speed and get a lot of double turns, and that's way more valuable than than him being like even more tanky than he is because he's already too tanky. So he doesn't need all this extra tank unless you want him to just be like out by himself catching heals surrounded by like four to five enemies at a time just spamming reses on him and have endurance earring res earring and you know gila res um and that i don't even know that that's optimal to do either because there's better ways of killing things than to just throw one of your units out as bait like you can just throw a decoy out and that's an easier way to draw enemies over because that's you know safer um but yeah, speed items on him is really good. Uh, Medina and Julio combo well with him. Spamming high jump is good. All right, so Traverse. Let's talk about Traverse. Because I haven't really talked about that. Uh, what, we're gonna, what we're gonna do... I'll fast acting medication him. Probably do that from here, I think. Can I? No, it's obstructed by that. I guess we'll just go here and do it. All right, cool. Alright, so Traverse allows him to climb. This is extremely important. So, like, this is a perfect example of where Traverse is useful. So, he's basically stuck, but he's not because he can Traverse. So, if we look at Traverse, you can go plus or minus 10 height. Uh, it can be obstructed. Like, for example, if I go here, you can see it's obstructed. But here it's not. 
So like you have to check which squares are obstructed or not. Like this square you might think is, but he jumps up high. So he actually has pretty good mobility vertically and horizontally. He effectively has eight move because you can traverse three tiles and then move five. He also can jump up plus or minus 10 with traverse, allowing him to, for example, hop down here and then attack this archer, probably killing it. So let's just do that for fun because he's so durable that he can get away with stuff like this. And also he can still move after he traverses. So we just put 200 damage on that and then he can run up here. And now he's also holding a flank. So he's an exceptional flanker. He's really good with the units that I refer to as like flank squad. Um, so flank squad is this idea of taking highly mobile damage units or highly mobile units that all do different things and having them travel in like a small group of three to four. And the idea is they can attack enemy mages and archers and push high ground and hold high ground and like pincer enemies. Uh, and they're all relatively durable and they, they have good survivability. So it's a legitimate thing. And it is quite like useful to do on certain maps, on maps where you're attacking especially. So Maxwell, he can push with like Anna, Milo, Roland, Picoletta, Huet. These are units that a lot of them have either high mobility, like Roland can't climb, but he has really good movement. He can easily hit eight movement. Um, and then like Anna, she can surmount. Milo can moon jump. Uh, Trish can also push flanks. She has leap. So she could be a unit that's potentially able to do this. So that's another unit that would be good for this type of strategy. Might as well king shield. So he's like low on health. And then maybe let's move here. So flank squad's pretty good. It's good. He, and Maxwell's part of it because of traverse. He, he, he has a lot of flexibility with his mobility. He can hop up to enemy mages and archers and two shot them usually. So like if you twofold turn him and he jumps up to like an enemy archer or mage, he can usually just double, triple thrust it and it's dead, which is pretty useful. Uh, he's durable enough to push these things, like especially when he has res and endurance earring. He's extremely durable, so if he takes some damage on the way up, it really doesn't matter. Uh, in this case, what we'll do is this. We'll hit him with some battery. Hit our boy with some battery. Another thing with Traverse, you can jump over enemies. So this is useful for setting up backstabs. It's just generally good to do. Uh, let's see... Let's throw a stone. Pick a lot of... <laughs> with the damage stones. Alright, so he's about to go, so there's no sense in uh, fast acting him, so we'll just double items. You can always save money by double item. Like if you just want to battery a specific unit, you can just throw like the basic HP item. Go. So that's something good to do. Especially on your first New Game Plus, where you're saving up money for all the upgrades. Assuming you want to upgrade a bunch of people, because that shit's expensive. And you will be grinding a lot. Alright, so in this case, he can't high jump. But I have a triple thrust. Or not a triple thrust, a, um, a run through. So the big upside about this is you can trigger follow-up attacks with run through, similar to Rush. It's, just, it's exactly like Rush. So all the stuff that Roland can do with Rush, Maxwell can do with run through. The only downside of run through versus Rush is Rush is always 2 TP. Run through virtually is 2 TP. It's up front 3 and then you get 1 back when it hits 2 enemies. But this can be really good to use. You can see there that's like decent damage for cheap. And then he gets 2 birds, 1 stone. And then he's at 2. And then he can do it again next turn. Alright, we let Julio die, which is unfortunate, but... This is not about him, so... <laughs> I'm like half paying attention to what the rest of my team is doing. Just to make sure we get all the info we need. Alright, so we went over Traverse. Alright, so he's effectively a damage tank with great mobility. He's easy. He's easily one of the better New Game Plus units. Uh, on a fresh save, he's actually bad. Which seems counterintuitive, but it takes him until level 33 to get Revive. And before that, it takes him to level 27 to get Traverse. So he d he's missing his core kit for until new game plus essentially so he only really becomes a good unit on new game plus and otherwise he's basically just like worse than roland before that but then afterwards i'd say he's a little bit better than roland i would say like before he gets his upgrades he's like a b plus tier and then after he gets his whole kit he's like an a plus tier and roland's like an a because maxwell has durability he has counter attack he has aoe damage he has tp management 
Um, yeah, that's pretty much all you need. He's a he's a bruiser tank AOE unit. That's like everything. Like a durable tank. He's a durable damage dealer that also does AOE. Like that's everything you want in a unit in this game. Straight up. Like there's nothing. Let's now him just for fun. Alright, so this is an example of like I could I could run through run these through, but I know I can kill these with a stone. So I can kill this dude with a stone. Or maybe I can't. Oh yeah, because he's a mage, he's a, he's durable to magic. Alright, so I actually can't kill him with a stone. Uh, but I can strangely I can heal these if I want to, so I'll show that. So we'll heal two. Two birds, one stone. So he can, he can, he's flexible. That's the other thing too. He's a very flexible unit. Being able to build TP while healing or dealing damage and being able to deal physical or elemental damage while building TP. This is massive. Honestly, there, you could, there's an argument that he could be S tier on New Game Plus and I wouldn't really fight against it. I would say that's kind of reasonable. So there's, okay, let's in tandem him. I almost just sneezed there, but I didn't, so I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Alright, so you can see here, when enemies get balled up like this... Oh, dude, this is so sick. This is disgusting. And then I can kill some guys. I think I can kill this dude. Yeah, so we can kill a guy. This is where... This is where things get real. Like, I can hit five enemies. This is when you get big damage. Look at that. And then you do, like, Glacial Moon after that and just clean it up with, like, you know, Serenoa or someone. And Piccoletta can just like throw us down. Just get a double kill. <laughs> Dude, Piccoletta actually has decent damage. She's a good cleanup unit. She cleans things up with her cat racket, so. I think that's pretty much all there really is to him. Um, one, one cool thing you can do with uh, Maxwell, if you want to run just like Julio or no battery, like if you don't want to run Medina for like a challenge, uh, running Maxwell with Roland is really good because what they can do is they can get on either side of enemies if there's like three enemies in a line and you can have Roland rush them and trigger a follow-up attack uh, with uh, Maxwell and then have Maxwell run through them and trigger up a follow attack with Roland and it's just kind of like a neat gimmick especially if their backs are exposed to one or the other because it's just like cheap it's like essentially two TP each for like some decent damage and it's just something that's kind of fun to do it's probably not the most optimal thing but it's just kind of neat so I figured I'd mention that uh, and then we can get Sereno over here with a sweeping slash. Big sweeping slash. Got Eridor in the building with the provoke. Pretty standard stuff. Just like move over here. But yeah, that's Maxwell. He's a really good unit. Um, he's one of the best New Game Plus units, for sure. He has a lot to offer. In terms of his flexibility, the fact that he can flank, the fact that he can grab high ground, the fact that he's so durable. Um, without a battery, though, he isn't as good. I would say if you're not running a battery, Roland is slightly better. Uh, if, assuming you use him correctly, assuming you get, like, back crits and line things up and shit. Um, otherwise, they're kind of comparable, because, like, spamming items on, on dead turns on Maxwell is, like, similar damage to rushing from the front. So, that's just something to consider. Uh, we'll just do... We'll just do this. Let's get one of these off. Well, we can take one more turn just to see what he can, what he's capable of. So you can see there, like with Eridor, you can line dudes up pretty easy for back crits. So he can take advantage of that. He can just backstab them, so you can like check the damage on that. So he can just like he can just basic attack them. He can actually kill this guy with a basic attack, which is pretty good because the spear the spear is a very flexible weapon when combined with like formations and lining enemies up. Basic attacks on the spear, especially with like Roland, can do surprising amounts of damage. Like if you run up, if you like move five plus with Roland, get an opportune attack and stab something that's not like a tank, you can deal like 210 damage to like 250 damage with a basic attack. So the spear is no joke. And then the fact that you can hit two things and then trigger fall up attack like through an enemy is massive because you get to, like twice as much damage like obviously there's the 0.7 multiplier or the 0.75 multiplier but you get twice as much damage because you hit two targets and then you get a follow-up attack that you wouldn't get if you were like a Saranoa for example unless you hawk dived or something all right pick a letter let's kill these 
So yeah, that's it for Maxwell. Uh, he's a really good unit. He has a lot of flexibility. He has good... He, he's, he's a little bit of everything. He's probably one of the better generalists in the game overall. He's not as damaging as Corintin, and he doesn't have as much utility as Corintin, but he's still extremely strong, and he's one of the best AoE units. I would say him and Corintin are the best AoE units, period. Uh, there's an argument to be made about like some of the lane nukers, like Roland or Giovanna, but they're not as consistent. Like high jumps, high jump and glacial moons pattern is so much easier. Like you could high jump these, or you could glacial moon all three of these easily, and just just the range of it is really what sets it apart from other skills. So yeah, high jumps good, units good. Uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, some people really like to use Lance Hurl from High Ground. It does the same. Actually, it doesn't do the same damage. It does increased damage. I'm thinking of Giovanna. Or, I'm sorry, Grama. Her attack, her range attack's the same. It does decent damage. Um, it has less damage. I don't know why it says it has a greater range than Triple Thrust. Because Triple Thrust is a melee attack. But some people like to use Lance Hurl to deal damage. And if you throw a spear at an enemy's back, this can be useful. I would argue, though, if you're on high ground or if there's an enemy you want to deal damage to, triple thrust will always deal more damage, so you can always traverse down to the enemy if it's below you or above you, and then run behind it and triple thrust it in most cases. And even if it doesn't hit it in the back, like, very likely, like, the only use case I would say this has is, like, last hitting an enemy if you're near the end of a match. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend using this. I would rather throw a stone because stones can hit multiple targets. So, I, unless you're just doing itemless or something, I don't really think Lance Hurl is worth your TP. Two TP is a lot. Um, you should, like, here's the thing. Would you rather throw a spear and deal less damage than triple thrust and use two, P, two TP and lose TP this turn instead of gaining TP? Or throw a stone for zero TP, hit two enemies, deal more damage than a Lance Hurl, and also gain TP and set up a future high jump? It, it's obvious which is better. It's not even the competition. Uh, Lance Hurl might be okay on a fresh save, but on New Game Plus, it's just not good. There's no reason to use it. Um, you could argue you can trigger follow-up attacks, sure, at range, but in most situations, you're going to be able to traverse and move and then triple thrust. Because traverse, triple thrust is 1 TP with the reduction, traverse is 1 TP. So 2 TP for more damage, or 2 TP for less damage, or just stay where you are and throw a stone. It's obvious which is better. So I, I did forget to mention Lance Earl, but it's it's not really worth using. If it did if it did more, like if it had if it had like a small AoE, maybe, but it doesn't, so not really it's not really that good. Some people like I've I've heard some people argue for it, but just like the logic, it's like, okay, so I single hit an enemy, let's say it hits two hundred damage, versus throwing a stone that hits three enemies for hundred each. I've just did a hundred extra damage and also gained TP, profited TP. So yeah. Uh, but counter stance is good. Pretty much his entire kit is good except for Lance Earl. So he's one of the few units who has nothing but good abilities. And his revive, which is hilarious. Um, so yeah, that's it for Maxwell. If you enjoyed this, found this useful, definitely like the video, subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, if there's any other things I missed, any other interesting high-level strats with Maxwell, definitely let me know. Drop a comment. Um, you can also let me know if there's any other things you'd like me to cover in the game. I'm more than open to that. But thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you in the next video.